We're going to um, go right in there and find out what is happening in this uh, Meghan Harry situation. Uh, Camilla Tomini joins us now, um, the, the royal um, uh, editor on this. We've got Dean Stott, who is a friend of Harry. And uh, from Canada, we've got Jason Perez, who's a Canadian breakfast uh, news anchor on CTV. Going to be talking to him very, very shortly. Yes. Camilla Tomini in the Daily Telegraph today says uh, Harry and Meghan getting what they wanted has only led to wanting more. What do you mean by that, Camilla? Well, I think there's a sense behind Palace Gates that while they understand that Harry and Meghan want to change their royal role because, as Meghan herself said in that interview with Tom Bradbury in the autumn, that it wasn't good enough to just survive, they wanted to thrive and be happy, I think the execution of how they've done this and announced it basically trying to bounce the Queen and other royals into negotiating a new future for them has gone down badly because from some Palisades perspective and indeed some of the main principles, they've tried to accommodate all of their needs. They've accommodated their need to break away from Kensington Palace and move to Windsor. £2.4 million pounds worth of taxpayers' cash was paid for renovating that property. They went on the tours that they wanted to go on. They, the Queen broke with royal tradition and allowed them to surround Archie's birth with a bit more secrecy than would have been the case with previous royals. Um, and I think there's a sense that just the way this has been carried out has been a bit of a slap in the face. It's also been carried out very, very quickly on all aspects of this. Let's first of all talk about... We're talking about a marriage that isn't even two years old yet and you have the country, this wave of, of high feeling, this wave of emotion, this wave of thinking. These two were there to modernise the royal family. They were welcomed with open arms. He certainly, for a time, is the most popular royal there has been probably since his mother. Where did it all go wrong and why so quickly? Um, well, I think the relationship between the Sussexes and the rest of the royal family has over time corroded to some extent. I think that there's two sides to every story and on one hand, the Sussexes, I think, have felt that they can't launch their own voice and their own path forward. And because they're further down the pecking order now, they want to have that independence and to be able to do things a bit differently. The personal statement they released said they want to have a more progressive role within the royal family. But because they have tried to carve their own path, that in turn has isolated them somewhat from the rest of their relatives. And so then we have this kind of, like, widening chism between the fact that the brothers don't get on, the fact that they seem increasingly on the outside, the fact that they seem that they're operating in a silo and that they're not consulted the But the brothers the did get on. I mean, are we basically saying she has made the difference? Well, no, I think there's a lot of kind of misogynistic comments around everyone blaming Meghan for this. Prince Harry, as Dean will testify, knows his own mind. This is a joint decision and a lot of the attacks on the press particularly have been by Harry on his wife's behalf. There's no doubt that they both feel overly vilified by the media. Um, but then there have been some legitimate negative headlines around the use of their private jet, well, around know? the expenditure on the house, um, and around, obviously, this recent behaviour, because I think there is a sense that while people are sympathetic with the, their position and the fact that they don't feel happy in what they're doing now and how they're doing it, and I think there is a sympathy, in fact, people saying, if you want to cut loose and go and be private individuals and go over to America or Canada and work on your charitable endeavours and actually earn money elsewhere, you can do that. It's this proposition that they can be half-in, half-out royals and the sense that they want their cake and eat it that I think is troubling not just people within the palace but actually members mm -hmm. of the public. The uh, sense of independence, Dean, that yeah. Camilla mentioned there as well, that's something that you think is a plus point for Harry, something that you can identify with, you think he can actually give himself and his ambitions wings with this. Exactly. I think we're always focused on, on, on the negatives. I think there's a lot of positives we're not going to uh, highlight in a moment. You know, they've also talked about their new foundation, the Charitable Foundation. They've got a position now, they could be great ambassadors without those royal boundaries, uh, and I think there's going to be a lot of good from this when they, when they break away. It's very early stages, it's less than 48 hours, and we're all second-guessing potentially what it's going to look like. But I think um, they've highlighted their intentions and what they would like. Obviously, now the, the talks, there will be a resolution which suits all parties, you know. Um, you've known uh, Harry for 12 years. You met yes. in, when you were both in the army. Yes, um, what did you make of him then? Um, do you think he's that, the same person that you knew then or how much has he changed? I think he's very much the same person. He's very level-headed, very astute. You know, in the military, that's probably the only environment he could be himself. It was away from the media. He could do a normal day-to-day -day job. But his personal circumstances have changed in the last two years. You know, you can't... 
you, you can fall in love with anyone. He's now fallen in love with a woman who's probably opened his eyes that there is another way of living. And he's a young father as well. So he will always serve... The Queen will always serve his country. But his priorities are changing now and he's to serve... Do you think he should be allowed to keep his royal title if he goes to live in America or Canada and they don't want to be senior members of the royal family? Do you think they should be allowed to keep that title? Uh, I, that's not for me to, to say, but I think their decision to live across the pond and here, I think that opens up that possibility they can still maintain that and fulfil those duties. Can you ever okay, see well, that let's go, We want to go across the pond right now uh, to Canada and we've got uh, Jason Perez there. Uh, Jason is a uh, Breakfast News uh, anchor there in Canada and uh, we're wondering uh, at the moment where uh, the Duchess uh, is, talk is, she's, she's headed back to Canada. Are you hearing anything? Uh, we're hearing that she might be returning to Victoria. Good morning. Yes, uh, Victoria is the capital of British Columbia, and that's where they spent their winter holidays, just about 20 minutes north of the capital city in North Saanich. And maybe they really enjoyed it, that uh, she needed to come back uh, for whatever reason. But a lot of people here believe that Victoria seems to be a nice fit. It's like an old slice of England, has that British charm. It's a small city. It's like 350,000, probably the population of Coventry. And uh, it's away from the bigger city here in Vancouver, about what, a 90-minute ferry ride. But it offers a lot for the family. They love the outdoors. Um, but also, too, it's just some more of a low-key place, lower pace of lifestyle. And I yeah, should note that uh, the Queen Jason. would approve of Victoria because she's, she visited Victoria uh, five times in her reign, including opening the Commonwealth Games in 1994. So... There's a, a lot of tie-ins to England, yeah. Victoria has, yeah, but so it seems a, like a natural fit. That's what the people But there's believe. a lot of delusion as well. I mean, this idea that life is slower and, and uh, the cameras and reporters somehow couldn't go out there and report on them. I mean, surely you guys now, you will be like bees round honey now, will you not? Well, I, you know, maybe it's the, our Canadian way of things. We're not as aggressive. There's no such thing really as paparazzi in Vancouver or Victoria. I mean, the media probably hounds uh, the professional hockey teams the most here. Uh, we kind of leave the, the actors and ce celebrities alone. Uh, so there is, you know, there's, there's a couple of television stations on Vancouver Island, but it won't be that same kind of scrutiny they would receive in Toronto Although or just, even here in Vancouver. And of just course, as a point States of clarification... Well, so. The idea that um, Harry and Meghan are being yeah. hounded in this country is complete and utter nonsense. Yeah. There are no paparazzi yeah. shots of them when they're at Windsor or going about their daily business. It's not the 80s and 90s anymore, so nobody's chasing them around. Yeah. Yes, there are negative headlines, but you'd expect there to be mm. so after the statement they released but, but on Wednesday. But this idea Wednesday. that somehow they can go to Canada and no-one in this digital private. age is going to try and find out what they're up to... But this is, the, this is the balance that they need to strike. On one hand, they want to be global celebrities. They don't like that word, but that's what they're asking for here because they want to exploit a market in North America for what their brand and what it is that they're mm. representing. But on the other hand, they want that on their terms as far as the media is concerned. This website suggests that they basically want to control the journalists that are covering their jobs and basically pick favourites who aren't going to write anything negative. Well, that's got connotations with all sorts of sort of <laughs> state control regimes that perhaps aren't the most progressive of approaches to take to the media. So maybe we're saying, Jason, all bets are off now and things are going to be different in your, in your part of the world because of them. And, you know, Canadians are welcoming even to, uh, to media members as well. Uh, we love hosting people, but... And we've had, you know, to be fair, we've, we've hosted a large international events, so, so we're used to the international spotlight, especially here in Vancouver, maybe not so much in Victoria, but I just know that Canadians are excited about the prospect of them deciding to move here. I've always been a big fan of the Royals, uh, Canadians have been, just with a connection to the Commonwealth. And you know what, even at the national donut coffee chain, Tim Hortons, offering free donuts to Harry, <laughs> Megan and Archie for the rest of their lives if they move to Canada. So maybe that's incentive as well. Sweet gesture. Might move myself. There's, there's Half alive. <laughs> I just want them free for a month, something like that. Uh, uh, Dean, thanks. when was the last time you thanks, spoke? Thanks, Jason. When was the last time you spoke to your friend? Prince so Harry? we're in communications quite re quite regularly. So yeah, we keep keeping uh, contact quite a lot. I just want to touch on what Camilla was saying. And yes, we don't have that paparazzi, but it, what it's damaging is what's pen to paper, and there's a lot of misleading stories. It's when it crosses into into fiction. I think that's probably 
uh, an issue what the, but, the but, couple but had. But, Miller, you've said before that it seemed to me the only the time when the press became negative is when they were telling us all to be careful about our carbon footprint and then they got on a private jet. Also, and that's when it seemed that the, the newspapers started reporting on that also, and then we were accused of no being one's, negative. No one's that. advocating kind of undue invective against either of them or inaccurate reporting or falsehoods, but... The media have been reporting that there was a rift, that they were operating in a silo and that they weren't consulting the Queen. And lo and behold, they confirmed that themselves on Wednesday. Yeah. I mean, that is the thing, when people actually believe, oh, but it's all fiction. Yeah, from it's the all print. made it's up. All, it's all made up. Well, and there you are, you'd have to say, vindicated, yeah? Well, I would say so, yes. Yeah. I mean, because everything that we've written has been entirely borne out. Just one last thing. How quickly do you think this will be wrapped up mm. and they all go? Buckingham Palace are saying days, not weeks, and they want a resolution as soon as possible. All right. OK. okay. No, Dyke will be speaking again next Indeed. week. Indeed. So, thank, yeah. thank, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you very much indeed.